What's up YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at Leadcode problem number 1454, active users. This one was requested by a subscriber, so we're going to give this one a very thorough look. I even prepared some slides to guide you through the problem. It's marked as medium. Let's get into it. So we have a table called accounts, which contains information about user accounts. We have a table called logins, which contains login information for these accounts. This one has ID and login date, while account just has the same ID and a name. Our task is to write an SQL query to find the ID and the name of active users. Active users are those who logged into the accounts for five or more consecutive days. Return the result table ordered by the ID. The query result format should be the following. It should just be ID and name of accounts, which is both in accounts. So let's get into writing this up. First of all, we have these two tables, accounts and logins. And Accounts is not really the, the central table here because it only contains a lookup for the account ID. It just gives you the name for an account ID, which we can't do much with yet. So we're probably going to focus on logins, which contains ID and login date. So every entry is one login for a certain account having this ID. And this is pretty much all we can go with. We only have this table and this lookup table called accounts. So whenever that's the case and we want to look at something for consecutive days and we have a date in here, we probably have to self-join and that is the case here as well. So we want to establish a self-join where we look at one certain date and then try to find connections to other dates that fulfill this condition of logging in for five or more consecutive days. So we want to take one date in our login table and then look up in another version of the login table if there are five more following days for that date. And I hope that was understandable, but we're going to take a look at a visualization in a minute. So as I said, we're going to self-join. So let's get into this visualization of having the logins table twice. So we're going to call this one A and the other one B and then we go through all dates in here and try to match the condition we have in our problem statement being that you logged in for five or more consecutive days. So for this example input it can pretty much only be ID 7 because ID 1 is only in there twice and it has to be at least five consecutive days, right? So we're going to look at 7 which would be the example output which we've seen in the which we saw in the problem statement. And let's just check what we would do without the, the second table. So we would go in here, see there's a login on 30th of May. Then there's one on 31st of May, which makes it two consecutive days. Then we have one on 1st of June, three consecutive days. Then we have one on June 2nd, four consecutive days. Again on June 2nd, uh, June 2nd, we don't count that because it's the same day. And then we have one on June 3rd, which makes it five consecutive days. And we should output that. We only have another login. We also have another login on June 10th, but that's not a consecutive day. That's more than one day later, right? So this fulfills the condition. Now let's see how we implement that. Now since we want to compare one row with other rows in the same table, we're going to self-join and create another version of the table. We're going to call one A and another one B. And using the date diff function, we can tell the difference in dates in days. Let's check the definition here on W3Schools, which is a great resource by the way. You basically plug in two dates, date one and date two here and it gives you the number of days between those two date values. So we can even try it here, try running it. Let's see the difference between June 25th and June 15th in the same year is going to be 10 days. Perfect. So let's go back to our example and I actually marked all date differences to the first date and first login of ID 7. So they logged in on 30th of May 2020. And there's a zero day difference to the same date, which we're going to ignore. 
there's a one day difference to May 31st. There's a two day difference to June 1st, a three day difference to June 2nd. Again, a three day difference to June 2nd because it's in the table twice. They locked in twice on that day pretty much. I used dotted lines to kind of show that we already had this case. That's a duplicate. And then we have four days between May 30th and June 3rd. We also have 10 days between May 30th and June 10th, but that would be no longer consecutive and way more than five days, right? So for this example, that is the case that actually holds. If we have this connection and have four upcoming days, one, two, three, and four, we have five logins in a row, right? And anything more than that is good, but it has to be at least five logins in a row. So as long as we can match these four of logging in on the day after, being this first connection with one, on the second day after, third day after, and fourth day after, we established this condition of logging in five days in a row because the first date in here is already yeah, zero. If we start from one, that would be day one, two, three, four, and five. So let's go back to a code and see how we could implement that. Basically, we want to find that match and get at least or get exactly those four matches. So we can say they logged in on the day after, two days after, three days after, and four days after. So let's get into coding this up. We're going to select star from logins A, join logins B to make that self-join. And the condition should first of all be that we have matching IDs. So a.id is b.id. And then we want to establish that date difference connection. So a.login date and b.login date. The difference between them should be between 1 and 4. We're not going to count 0 because yeah, we already know that we logged in on that day because it's in the left-hand table. But we want to find these connections 1, 2, 3, and 4. And later on we're going to count if these are actually 4 and if we have 4 connections, we know that the person logged in on 5 consecutive days. So let's see what that gives us first. Now technically if we want to have it exactly the same way as in the visualization, we need to change these up here because of the ordering the data function works in. So if I have a higher date in here, it's actually going to give me minus one because that's the ordering it does. So it says this date is smaller than the following date. It goes from left to right. But it does work in exactly the opposite way since we're self-joining anyways. So yeah, you could either have it A and B or B and A. So this gives us, it's not ordered, but it gives us matches that are at most four days apart and at least one day apart. So here we have May 30th and June 3rd, May 30th and June 2nd. June 2nd again because it's in there twice, June 1st, June 31st. So now we just need to count these up and see if we actually have four matches. So let's count the number of matches in here by... Like, first of all, we're going to keep a.id and then count up the number of matches in B. I want to use distinct here to not count duplicates twice, get rid of this dotted line pretty much. And yeah, let's see what that gives us. We also need to group by 
a.id so we do this per id per user it gives us a value of four for seven for id one we didn't get any matches because we didn't have dates in that window for the second table so this looks good now we just need to check whether that count is four and then only output those that have a count of four so let's take this one and put it down here in a having condition which allows us to filter on aggregate functions count as an aggregate function and that should be exactly four okay so now it should only give us seven and that works pretty much we also want to include the name so we just need to look up in our lookup table called accounts and that should be it so let's join accounts on the id a.id should be accounts.id we could use b as well because it's already joined in here and id in accounts should match id in logins it's the primary key so now we can select name as well from accounts even gonna spell it out so now in order to not confuse different login dates i also need to add login date in the group by so that we don't mix up dates and their matching and then because that condition could be fulfilled several times imagine uh, the, the user logging in on June 4th, so another date. We're gonna have a match for the first date, May 30th, and then also May 31st, because we're gonna log in for five consecutive days starting on May 31st and also on May 30th, because they actually logged in six days in a row. So it's gonna produce several outputs of the same ID, so we're gonna use distinct here and it should output that to only one. That's not the case in here in this test case, but there are other test cases that will fail if you don't do that. All right, that is an accepted submission. Let's just once again go through why we're having a filter on exactly four here. Actually, since we say date diff should be between one and four, it can only be four the count can be higher than four the distinct count since there might be duplicates in here as is the case in this example but if the date difference should be between one and four there can only be the case of date difference being one two three and four because we're counting distinct logins and say it has to be between one and four. All right, that's pretty much it for that problem. I know it's been a long explanation, but I hope it makes sense. It can be hard to wrap your head around this. It took some time for me as well, but there are similar problems. And as long as you know how to approach it, I think you're gonna get pretty far when knowing to self-join and take a look at these dates. Um, but it might need to click for you. Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you stick around and check out some of my other videos on lead code SQL database problems. I have playlists based on each difficulty and one big playlist containing all videos on the topic. So make sure you check them out and leave a subscription if you want this video in your sub feed and study some more. See you next time, hopefully.